All right, folks, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Dave, and this is my political channel, Save America, Vote Tulsi Gabbard President. Um, today has been on the internet all about Beto O'Rourke. Articles about Beto, Beto trending here, people just talking mindlessly about Beto, how much money he uh, hauled in on his first day. Uh, and my candidate, Tulsi Gabbard, who has all these great ideas, who I think um, could really bring the country together, who, believe it or not, I don't think would be all that polarizing. I know that might be difficult to achieve, but uh, I'm a center, center right person. I realize that we can't do this war thing forever, uh, and we shouldn't be doing it at all, uh, never mind forever. And But it seems like it's been going on forever, and this guy Beto O'Rourke comes along and he becomes the next celebrity president. All right, now, keep in mind, there are similarities between Obama and Trump. Here they are. Cult of personality, cult of personality. Uh, we went from this guy who was cast as like this young, first African-American, Joe Biden called him clean and articulate and all this stuff, <laughs> and it was just, a lot of misspeaking there by Uncle Joe, who has yet to declare uh, his candidacy, but the media tells me that once he does, look out for Uncle Joe. He's just going to roll over everybody, and, and, you know, if it's him against Trump, folks, um, we may want to really think about a third-party candidate. All right, I'm getting way ahead of myself because this page is, and channel is about Tulsi Gabbard. But watching the media fawn over Beto O'Rourke, the article behind me from the Chicago Tribune, which you probably can't see the words, um, they're asking the rhetorical question, is Beto O'Rourke the next JFK or Obama? Like, we didn't see that one coming. Like, everybody knew when this guy announced that it was all about star power. Uh, remember when Obama ran for president in 08? There were women who were fainting at his events. Uh, I can see this happening again because, you know what? America is so invested in pop culture and in, you know, almost like politics. You know, you always hear about where politics and culture intersect. And, for instance, the Republicans have done a bad job at running candidates that connect with the pop culture because they've been so anti-pop culture for so long. By the way, progressives, a lot of them understand that uh, pop culture isn't a way to gauge somebody's um, suitability, shall we say, if they're suitable for the White House or not. And I, I'm that's refreshing because it just seems that Hollywood has so much control over who uh, becomes the presidential nominee. Obviously, Hollywood was in for Hillary Clinton. Hollywood apparently doesn't like Bernie Sanders. So <laughs> Bernie goes up, in my estimation, even though I'm 100% for Tulsi. Uh, and I don't think Hollywood even knows who Tulsi Gabbard is. So um, to me, look, she could come out of nowhere if she can get in a debate and actually debate these people and people will see this empty suit guy over here who's doing this, waving his arms around as he speaks. I had to get in that, that into the video a little bit. Although I do speak with my hands, I, I'm not directing, you know, airplanes on how to land and so forth. But um, Tulsi Gabbard, I think, could wipe the floor with most of the people on the stage, except maybe for Andrew Yang and Bernie Sanders. Um, I'm going to say pretty much everybody else who's in there who speaks in platitudes and who's just like, hey, I need to run for president. It's, it's the time to run for president now. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard sees a need because she understands that the military-industrial uh, complex, uh, which is pretty much the deep state. If you're over on the right and you believe in a deep state, I do. I believe that our government is being controlled by people who aren't elected into office and it has to stop. Uh, if you believe in the corporatocracy, which I do, whereas large corporations are basically calling all the shots 
and regular workaday Americans are left to kind of yell and scream at their television sets, okay? And the fact that we're intervening in Venezuela and we've got guys on TV who are uh, threatening to shoot Maduro and all this stuff if he doesn't uh, change his tune uh, as far as just leaving, which is just incredible stuff. It's stuff, again, the Founding Fathers would just roll over uh, listening to. So this guy Beto, I mean, if it's Beto, if Beto becomes the guy and it's Beto against Trump, Trump's going to eat his lunch because I can already hear the nicknames. I mean, his name is Beto. They're going to call him Beta. They're already doing it. Um, and the people on the, on the right, they're going to have so much fun attacking this guy. And by the way, and the progressives are too. The progressives are going to be ticked because they're going to sit there and go, we could have had Bernie, we could have had Tulsi. And I'm throwing Bernie in there because I know the Bernie uh, contingency out there is large. You know, it's just, and at least they're principled. I just don't think Bernie at his age is the right guy at this time. I would rather see Tulsi Gabbard get it um, because I think the youth energy, the military experience, I mean, she takes so many issues off the table. And if they try to come at her, they're going to look like bullies, you know. And I think um, that she, her, her ratings are going to go sky high. People, if, you know, imagine if Donald Trump starts throwing mud at Tulsi Gabbard or making up nicknames for her or something like that. Um, it, it won't stick to her, but it will stick to Beto. It'll stick to Kamala Harris, probably. It'll stick to Cory Booker. It's not going to stick to Tulsi Gabbard. But Beto is like Velcro. And not only that, I mean, he has no original policy proposals. There's a guy by the name of Andrew Yang who's out there who's got all of these incredible policy things that he he took the time on his website. It's it's like you've got to have at least a two-year degree. Well, who knows? With the way college is today, maybe you can understand it without the two-year degree or the four-year degree. But the dude has got a lot of information, and um, he's prepared. He's nuanced, and... He's an issue-driven candidate, as is Tulsi Gabbard. Um, Beto is he's a wind vane, okay? He is a weather vane. He's just shh. And he's just going to go where he, he knew that as soon as he got in, he was going to get a ton of media like the Chicago Tribune article here comparing him to Obama or comparing him to JFK. Uh, folks, you know, Lloyd Benson... To coin that phrase, you know, he knew JFK and he was talking about Dan Quayle. And Dan Quayle and Beto aren't that far apart, folks. They're really not that far apart. Um, it's just, to me, uh, I mean, it's one empty suit over here, another empty suit over there. Um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of funny to watch the media do this, but it's totally predictable. They don't want controversy. They don't want a candidate to get up there and say, you know, we probably shouldn't be doing these uh, regime change wars. We shouldn't be doing them because we're bankrupting our kids' future, okay? Uh, you know, he's going to, again, he'll run a little to the left and try to make the progressives happy. In a general election, he's going to be a blank slate. Remember, Obama was kind of the same way when he ran for president. He was trying to be all things to all people. And in the end, he became very few things to very few people. And Trump, who came in, saw that and focused more on a couple of issues and galvanized the people who believe in what he believes. So, you know, he lost me because he started going around the world and he let go of the steering wheel and um, the deep state and, you know, Mike Pompeo and all these neocons are running his foreign policy not only are they running it they're running away with it and that's not what i expected and again disappointed by yet another guy who said he wasn't a politician but ended up becoming the ultimate politician so <sighs> beto o'rourke um sucking the air out of the room and the atmosphere 
temporarily. We'll see if it's sustainable for him and if the media just continues to um, carry his water. I imagine they're going to because he's their kind of candidate. It's all about, you know, looks and, and hand-waving motions, I guess. All right, done. See you soon, everybody.